recording. Nice. Irony. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, wait, are we doing a test thing to see if you can hear the dishwasher? I don't really care, do you? Oh, I don't care. Okay. Hello, sweet peas. Hello. This is our first, like, podcast slash YouTube video. Yeah. So we're going to see how it goes. Our first tube cast. Our first tube cast. Our first pod tube. Yeah. Welcome. Um... So yeah, we haven't done the podcast in a while. In a hot minute. Well, it's because like it does take... A long time. It takes a long time to make. I mean, it takes as long as it takes to record. Yeah. And then like we don't make any money from it. And then it's also like we have to mentally prepare to be like recorded. Yeah. Versus like when we're on stream, even yeah. if we're not like in the stream headspace, like in a few minutes... You know, our friends are chatting with us, and so it's kind of, like, easier to get into. Yeah. I feel like also with streaming, for us, it's more fun because, like, we have a community there of folks who are really great. So, and this is going to sound stupid, but I literally, like, forget that, like, they know us from TikTok, and it literally just feels like hanging out and playing video games with my sweet internet friends. Yeah. Um, And the podcast, people seem to really like it, which is great, and, you know, we want to, like, make things that people like, but, um, there's just, like, not as much, like, interaction. There's no back and forth. Oh. Yeah, it's just, like, us screaming into a void. Yeah. Um, and I feel like when we have like, big stressful conversations on stream. There's all these people being like, oh, my God, same. And it, like, feels, like, cathartic and also, like, rewarding. And for the podcast, I think it's just, it's, like, like more of a bummer. Yeah. So the way that I have conned my brain into us wanting to do this is uh, because now we have our YouTube up. So this is going to be also on YouTube. So if there are people who want to watch and then it's something else that we can put on that because we don't really make a lot of, like, long-form content. Yeah. In general, and we wanted to talk about sort of like events that have taken place since we last, last did the podcast. Did the podcast um, since the last podcast we had our wedding? Wow, yeah. When when was the last podcast? I think right before the wedding. Was it? I really don't know. That I guess sense. we could have looked. Before I'll, we let me look. This. I'll look. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Been a hot minute. August tenth. Yeah, so that's, that was like a month before our wedding. Yeah, so it's been a second. Um, yeah, you know, had the wedding. I feel like it went well. The wedding and the honeymoon both went off Killer. without a hitch, actually. Yeah. I don't really think anything major wrong happened. Apparently no. our caterer was like 30 minutes late, but I never found out. Yeah, I was very stressed about it at the time. Yeah. But it was good. Our our day of coordinator was incredible. Yeah. It was, it's not, she's never done it before and she did a great uh, job. Incredible. Yeah. I would say my best advice I can give is if you have a very responsible friend who's been a stage manager before, but um, who you aren't close enough with to want them to be in your wedding party, absolutely pay them like $500 to be your day of coordinator. Yeah. Because that's a lot of money to pay your friend, but that is much cheaper than an actual day of uh, coordinator. If you have the money, I'm sure an oh, actual God. day of coordinator would be even more, would be even more like seamless, or, but our friend did yeah. an incredible job. She but an actual so day good. of coordinator is like fifteen hundred dollars and they, they deserve be. it As yeah it's be. a stressful job yeah our friend was sprinting around the entire time um but she did incredible yeah she did so good yeah um so that was you know that was good the that was good the honeymoon was the good. honeymoon was really good we didn't have anything super stressful happen other than i neither of us had ever been on vacation for two weeks and it it was a honeymoon and it was super fun but it wasn't relaxing really oh really well like the cruise was I felt like the cruise was super relaxing. The cruise was super we relaxing. We were cruising. But um, but it is like we had such busy days at the beginning and the end of the honeymoon that we were like exhausted by the last day. And now I'm desperately in love with you, but we knew going into it. Oh, yeah. That was no. what was going to happen. Because I have no I was regrets. Like, and when we were on the boat, I had to beg Morgan to let me take a nap one day. Yeah. I was like, please. And she was like, there's so many cruise events we haven't done. And I was like, I'm trying to cruise. Yeah. In the future, I think we're gonna be cruise people yeah exclusively oh my god yeah because it's so nice to yeah. like and it is so expensive but like at least for the disney cruise you pay so much money and then you don't really pay for anything once you get there unless you want to buy souvenirs or alcohol yeah i also was really concerned about like and this is like incredibly so privileged to say but like concerned about like the environmental impact of like a cruise and the Disney one is actually one of like the best rated ones in terms of like their uh, carbon footprint and what they do with their how they like process their sewage and like the things that they do like while on the ship and like other things like that so yeah. um so I don't know that we'll do like cruising with you know like, like princess else. or yeah. like anybody else I'm sure they're not I mean they're not great for the environment but they're you know very bad no but like it's but. hard to find like ethical consumption under capitalism this is true and, and like, yet we will do all that we can yeah. do to be consuming ethically and for yeah. us it's it would be if we we're gonna go on a cruise to go on a disney cruise which is again 
absurdly privileged. Yeah. But here we are. Yeah. It do be like that. So it was amazing. Oh my god, yeah. It was really good. So yeah, so we got back from our honeymoon yeah. um October tenth. Yes. And then we inseminated for the first time November like Eighteen. Yeah, according to Morgan's cycle, she was literally ovulating the day we got back from the cruise. That's true. And she was like, and it wasn't gonna happen. It? And our sperm donor, it was there was no way. That no, we were gonna be and able that's to fair because that. we yeah. weren't planning on no. And we just had like so many things going on. Morgan was like, "What if?" And I was like, mm, "Bold." Yeah, but we inseminated for the first time. Yeah, in November. And I guess if you don't already, if you haven't been like keeping up on our other socials, content warning for this podcast for. Pregnancy loss and miscarriage. Yeah. Um, this is going to be talking about, like, our pregnancy loss experience. But we are going to talk about, like, the pregnancy and how we found out. I do feel like it'll probably be in the title of the... That's true. That's... In the podcast. I'm hearing, I'm hearing as you say that now, but I don't want people to... I don't know. Anyway. Anyway. Um, so, yeah. And then on, no, on December 1st, um, I took a pregnancy test at work... That was positive, so I left work early. Yeah. Um, Told Phoebe that I was sick. Right. And... Which was unhinged, because Morgan had taken a pregnancy test literally at work, came up to my desk, like, shaking, and was like, I have to leave. I don't feel good. And I was like, oh my god, like, you look terrible. Like, get out of here. Yeah. You know, so that was Um, was sweet. So yeah, so that was why. And then I left, and I called one of my bridesmaids, um, and was like, hey, I just took a pregnancy test that looked like it was positive, but it was, like, one of the, like, flimsy paper ones, um, which... Like, first of all, if you've never, like, tried to conceive or anything, um, it's, like, incredibly rare to get a false positive yeah. on a pregnancy test because the way that it works, it is, it is searching for a specific hormone that only exists in your body when you're pregnant. Um, so it it's literally, like, basically impossible to have a false positive, um, you know. So, so I was like, you know... Very unlikely, but, like, I mean, it is technically possible for whatever reason. And it was, like, a very faint line. Yeah. But it was definitely yeah, yeah, yeah. a line. And you that's the other way. It. Is that if it's a positive, even if it's the faintest line, that means that there's some HCG, which means that you're pregnant. But. Yeah. So I uh, went and got, like, more. I got, like, a clear blue and a first response and took those, and those were the positive. Um, and then went and got Phoebe from work when they were done working, which it was, they were literally in training. Yeah. For the job that we both work at now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they couldn't have left early no. anyway. Um, Mm-mm. but got them home, told them that we were pregnant and we have like a very cute video of Phoebe finding out. Um, and then over the next like few weeks, we told like most of Phoebe's family. Um, I told like a couple of members of my family. Um, and we told like a few of our friends who were like in our wedding party. Um, and the reason that we didn't like announce anything is because like, I have always had a huge fear of having a miscarriage, and I didn't want to have that publicly. Publicly, <laughs> which is, you know, kind of funny. Cosmically, um, yeah, a little. So anyway, um, so every like milestone that we had, so the first like big milestone is making it to six weeks, right? Um, because like most miscarriages happen before six weeks, which is why like even folks who aren't trying to conceive. Um, sometimes don't even realize that they're pregnant and then, like, have a miscarriage. And to be clear, the way that pregnancy weeks are counted, um, the first week starts... The week of your period. The week of your last period that you had. So you are two weeks pregnant. Before you're ever Before conceived. you've even conceived. So I think that that's relevant. Yeah. Because the timeline of it is kind of fake and weird. So we had only known that Morgan was pregnant for... A month or whatever. Yeah, a little over a month. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we made it to six weeks, and I was, like, feeling a little more comfortable. And then um, seven weeks was New Year's Eve, so we told Phoebe's family at Christmas. Yeah. Which was still, like, very... I mean, it was a really sweet moment. Yeah. Um, but over Christmas break, like, we had time off work anyway and we were staying um with Phoebe's family to help do like some home projects um I had been having some like spotting which is super normal um during pregnancy um but I had been googling it I was on like a a group page of people who were due the same like timeline that I was due a lot of them were also experiencing spotting so I like didn't feel super weird about it until the Tuesday after Christmas it had gotten like a little heavier still not like as bad as if I was like on my period 
um, but definitely heavier. And so we called the OBG that I have, um, which my intention was to get a midwife. But like when you make your first appointment, at least for me, they are, they were like, oh, well, you've already seen this OBG. So like, let's make it with him. And I was like, okay, like at that first appointment, I can ask to switch to a midwife. No big deal. Um, anyway, I told them and they were like, okay, like super normal, but it's your first pregnancy. So like, that's why you're stressed out. So they were like, let's get a blood test. Um, so Tuesday afternoon, we went and got a blood test done for them to test my HCG. And it was 13,000, which is like very much in a normal range. Um, and I was like, okay, cool. Like, you know, we had to go back for the same test on Thursday. Because the way that it works is they check to see if you're, because your HCG is supposed to essentially like double every 48 hours. Yeah. Um, the levels of it. So uh, they were going to be checking to see if like, it, if it was like progressing it was as it was supposed, supposed to. to. And if it's not growing the way it's supposed to, then you know that like you're, you're probably going to be having a miscarriage if not already having that. Right. Um... So they, on Tuesday, everything looked good. They were like, okay, come back in two days and we'll do this again to make sure that it's growing the way it's supposed to. Um, at this point, we had still never seen the OB. We mm -hmm. had not had our first ultrasound. Our first ultrasound wasn't scheduled till uh, like 10 or 11 weeks, um, which apparently is like very normal, um, at least in the States. So I was like, okay, like, you know, I didn't love that because I wanted to be seen, you know, as soon as possible as everyone does. For sure. But to know what's going on, to have some kind of knowledge right. of what's happening. Um... But the nurse that I spoke to over the phone was like, you know, don't be stressed. It happens all the time. And then was like, if it, you know, gets worse, you can go to the emergency room. But it would need to be, like, much, much worse for it to warrant going to the emergency room. Right. And so I was like, okay, sure, whatever. So and we've been talking to, like, family members who've been pregnant and had spotting. We've been talking to, like, friends and, like, other people. Yeah. You know? So we had, like, that, like, support group of folks being, like, it's normal that you're stressed out, but, like, don't stress out. And I think in so many other circumstances, it is super normal. And I don't think stressing out ever helps anything. No, and, like, every, every just about every person I know who was pregnant said, like, oh, yeah, I was spotting a lot, like, in the first trimester. Yeah. And it makes sense. You're Especially, like, if you've never been pregnant before, your body is For going sure. through a huge amount of changes that, like, it's never done before. For sure. Um, and your your uterine lining is changing. It's, like, literally creating, like, a placenta. So if you're someone who's in early pregnancy, this is not to, like, stress you out. But if you're someone who is planning on trying to conceive or just starting your journey, these may be things that you want to, like, yeah. hear. But don't freak out. It's very normal. But, um, anyway, so then we woke up Wednesday to go to work, and both of us were, like, too stressed out to go. And we were like, you know what? Like, it's going to be expensive going to the emergency room, but, like... I've been up since 2.30. Yeah. But we were like, worst case you know, money wise, like we've paid seven or eight hundred dollars and they're like, everything's fine. You guys are just stressed out. And we were like, at this point, like we're too stressed out. Like it would be worth it to find out. Um, so we get to the emergency room and my like bleeding, like was just progressively getting worse as we were waiting. Um, I was like switching out pads every like 45 minutes, um, which is like way heavier than my period's ever been. Um, which like when I was Googling and like reading other people's stories, they were like, oh, it's like very similar to a period. Like, you know, like if you're miscarrying, it's like very, very painful, but like not any worse than, you know, period cramps. And it's just like, you're having your period, but like a really heavy one. Um, and that was not at all my experience. And I don't know if I've just been like lucky to not have like terrible, like, blood flow, flow yeah. yeah but morgan's cramps are normally much worse than she that's was experiencing. true um, so and that was kind of what we were going off of is we were like well if you're really in pain because that's sort of like what it, it seemed like people had said is yeah that, like it's more uncomfortable um yeah yeah so i was still having like like a seven or eight out of ten pain wise but i definitely had like 10 out of 10 pain on my period before yeah. just because i've always had really intense cramps right um, so literally we wait in the ER waiting room because of, you know, American healthcare for like four or five hours, yeah. um, before we can be seen. And that's not to slight like the nurses or oh anything. My God, the no. ER was doing their best. They were it's just great. because like, you know, it's so absolutely bonkers at the hospital right now. And if you've ever been to the ER and had to be there for hours and hours, it's just like a fucking cast of characters in there. Yeah. It is a truly, it's like being in an episode of the Twilight Zone. This was like definitely the worst day of our lives, but we were absolutely experiencing like beyond this trauma there yeah. were some people in the er that literally didn't seem like real people there were some funny things happening there was a woman who clearly was there oh 
to like get pain medicine and, and that woman's struggling with addiction no, and that sucks and that's super sad but it doesn't make it any less funny that she was there just like full on whimpering and then stopping to look and see if anyone was paying attention like to her. L- like like full like the worst acting you've ever seen it in was, your life she, like genuinely like she was like she thought she was going for an oscar and she was not <laughs> you can't if you watch the youtube but she's literally like oh. <laughs> like was crying awful. at people and I'm like ma'am and it's like not like it's <laughs> the reason it was so funny is because we're like you know everybody's the main character in their own story and she just was so clearly having her main character moment and we're over here you know having a very traumatic experience yeah. and I'm like ma'am I'm gonna need you there also was this man who we just kept on calling him the turtle and he was just like hacking up he a had lung. to be there he was like related reasons like the most horrific it was loud, the worst coughing I'd ever heard was, in my life and it was ever like w- his, once every, his like, mask two also minutes. wasn't on properly which is always annoying no and there was this boy who was walking around and just kept on like badgering people for cigarettes oh yeah I don't he, know what he was oh there for he ended up leaving God. so it must have not been that much of an emergency oh unless God. the emergency was that he wanted cigarettes it was something But he else. literally stopped and asked, like, this, like, janitor type person who was, yes. like, cleaning up and, like, wiping down the emergency room seats. Yeah. He was like, hey, man, do you smoke? And this man, ha- like, the janitor must have been, like, lying. Yeah, I don't know if he was Because he can't be telling the truth. No. But he was like, no, to work at the hospital, you have to be in peak physical condition. I actually had to sign something saying that I wouldn't smoke or he's, do anything. He's that like, would... because smoking is terrible for you. Yeah. And that man's right. <laughs> he's <laughs> right, you know. Oh but God. And, like, this man who was just trying to ask people for cigarettes, like, didn't interrupt to my, which was nice, no. I thought. But he was just like, yeah, man, no, yeah, okay, I dude. shouldn't be smoking, I get it, yeah. Cool, yeah, yeah, thanks, man, yeah. And this, you know, custodial person just keeps talking about how he signed something yeah, saying that he, he can't wasn't gonna smoke, smoke cigarettes, cigarettes. which so can't much. be true. I Like, there are doctors who smoke, you know what I mean? Sure and you shouldn't, are. obviously, everyone knows that, but, like, oh my god. anyway, that was pretty interesting. It was so, it was every, chaotic, like, peak chaotic the whole time. There was also this woman who, like, was definitely, like, experiencing homelessness and that sucks but she was also quite a character because she kept walking up to the triage nurse and like from what we could tell nothing was actually wrong with her but she's wearing scrubs that the triage nurse has given her clearly and she's like hey tanya i need some more scrubs these are all wet and tanya the triage nurse is like i don't know if that was her name but (laughs) she's like well how are they wet the ones that i gave you and it's not raining outside no um, she's like, the ones I gave you, I just gave you two hours ago. How are they wet? And the woman is like, I don't know. They just are. She literally sounded like lumpy space princess. Yeah. She's like, I need more. And she was like, you know, smelled so much like cigarettes. She also, when I went to the bathroom, one of the millions of times was clearly smoking cigarettes in the bathroom. And I wasn't about to tell on her, honestly, because like, we're not I'm, snitches. I'm going through my own thing and she's yeah. going through something, you know? Yeah. 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 And like, she wasn't rude or anyone. At least she wasn't badgering people for cigarettes. No. But she, it was just chaotic. she was something. Everything about it was chaotic. Um, there was also a man in the corner who, like, I don't know what he was going through, but he just kept muttering, like, curse words. And, yeah. like, he's going through it. He For did sure. get called back eventually. He did. Yeah, he did. Um, yeah. But it was... It's... The, the ER is just, like, always a bit much. Yeah. You know? Like, if you've been... It's something else. And so it was, it was a lot. And so luckily, we also going into the ER were really concerned that essentially what they were going to say was like, oh, come back when you're bleeding harder, right? Yeah. Or that they were going to be like, there's no reason for you to be worried about this, right? And in my brain, I was like, best case scenario, we go in there, they let us get a transvaginal ultrasound, which is typically what they have to do to like see anything at that state. And mm-hmm. then, you know, like we've paid a stupid amount of money, but like we're not this worried because I literally have been up since 2.30 a.m. Like... And could not fall asleep. I was, like, so stressed out about it. And so, you know, like, we were just both absolutely going through it. So Morgan had been given, um, like, pads and was, like, you know, going through those. I will say, like, I'm sure nobody who works... Should we say the hospital? It's a big hospital, so I feel like it's fine. Also, oh, yeah. I know where we live. Yeah, shout out to Salem Health. Salem Health Hospital. They were great. First of all, if you ever drive by it, it literally looks it's like a beautiful. college campus. It's beautiful. It, it looks like they built it, the, like, two minutes before you showed up. It's so beautiful. It's Everyone who worked at the ER, I think I'm literally going to write, like, a thank you note to the doctor that we saw. Yeah. Because she was absolutely wonderful. If we um, had anyone else, I can't imagine how it would have gone. Like, a genuinely life-changing, like, experience for us to have had her. Yeah, it like, was the worst day of our life, and they were so, so kind. Yeah. Um, and, absolutely like, lovely. 
I'm sure that I don't know how many people, like young people, they see a week that are having a miscarriage. Yeah. But like they acted like it was the like we were the first ones they'd ever had. Like, and I love that because I do feel like sometimes in the healthcare field, yeah, because they're so used to seeing trauma after trauma, like yeah. a way that some of them deal with it is by being very cold. Yeah. And that you know I can't imagine being in their position, so I'm not judging them. But like you know sometimes you do see that, and I don't at all feel like any of the people that we saw they were no. all like, I'm so sorry this is happening. Like you know. Yeah. It's a very, it's such a clinical environment, and so I think it's traumatic to be having such a vulnerable experience in such a clinical environment. But when you have people working there who are making you feel like, hey, we're humans and we're here with you, and we see that this is really hard and we're sorry, like that was really great. Yeah. Um. So when we first talked to like the triage nurse, she essentially was like, okay, yeah, like we're gonna have you guys. You know, she's like, let us know if the bleeding gets worse or if you're like experiencing severe pain. And we were afraid in that moment that she was telling us, oh, you need to go home. You can just come back if this is happening. And so Morgan said like oh god I was afraid you're saying we should go home she's like oh my god no like, she was like not stupid that you guys came yeah here. she's like no I completely understand like it's, it's what a lot of people like that's okay like don't be worried about it. like not don't be worried about it but she was like don't don't feel like you made the wrong decision yeah it's good that you're so here that was also like really nice yeah yeah, yeah, um, yeah and then we you know waited five hours and right. then they finally saw me yeah. um and I'm like in tears like you know saying like hey I'm having like you know tissue falling out of me and it was literally like Anytime I went to the bathroom, which was every, like, 45 minutes to change the pad, it was, like, it was like I was peeing, but, like, it was just blood coming from, you know, where it was coming from. Um, And so I was, like, you know, this has never happened to me. Um, And so I feel like I knew, like, two hours into the ER, like, what was happening. And that, I mean, it wasn't fine, but, like, I was already on the grief train, and I was, like, just ready to leave. But you can't just leave. (laughs) No. And I was, I think like mostly in denial because I kept being like, we'll we'll just get back there and they're going to be like, oh, you've got some, because it is possible to be having probably not quite that much bleeding, but to have like heavy bleeding and have it be like a tear or something weird, or it's like attached in kind of a weird way and you need to be on bed rest for the rest of the Yeah. There was like a woman on my like Facebook group that I was in who, uh, went in and found out that she would have been having twins but was miscarrying one and right. then the other one was totally fine which is a roller coaster um, you can't even yeah imagine. which is a lot especially cuz like i don't know much about like multiple births but like i feel like usually the other one gets like absorbed um yeah, so it the... does seem strange that but i mean i literally don't no, know no i have no idea um and then someone else like found out that they had like a tear in their uterine wall right um which is like a little stressful and something they would have to monitor yeah but like their baby was fine so i was like you know these things are possible but with the amount of like tissue that i was losing um you know i was pretty sure i knew what it was so they finally get us back there we have this, like, very sweet nurse come in who, like, <laughs> has, like, this toolbox that like, just says pelvic kit on it. Which which I don't know if it always looks like that, but it was kind of funny that yeah. she looks like freaking Bob the Builder coming in here yeah. as we're, like, you know, crying. Yeah. And she was like, so they're going to do a pelvic exam. What? And then she's, like, describing kind of what that'll be like. And she's like, um, you know, do you need anything? And I was like, um, if I sit here with no underwear on, like... You're going to have blood on your seat. So she's like, okay, okay. So she puts, like, you know, one of those, like, puppy pee pads down for me to sit on. And, like, as we're, like, changing, um, there was, like, so much tissue in my underwear like a from sig- where we were, like... Like a significant amount. So at that point... I think we were both, like, in shock because yeah. it was just, like... It was just so graphic. It was so much more gruesome than I could have possibly ever thought that it was going to be when you're told your entire life a miscarriage is similar to a period, and this was not similar to that. No. So, and, and, like, I don't know what other people's experiences have been, but this was nothing like a period. No. Mm-hmm. The way that it was similar was, like, the blood was coming from the same place. And that's... But that's it. The, the only thing that's similar. And so we... Morgan essentially is, like... Like, like, like the love of my life is there with, like, her underwear around, like, her thighs, and there's, like, all of this tissue, and um, we're just, like, we need help, essentially, yeah. and so... And the doctor, who is amazing, like, comes, comes to the in, rescue. And it's and like, she's hey, like, okay. like, here's what we're gonna do, because we're just, like, stuck. Like, we're like, oh my god. And Morgan literally says, like, that's baby-shaped. And so it was just rough. Yeah, so she comes in, um, she does the pelvic exam, which was 
not not the most uncomfortable thing that had happened that whole day, but it wasn't comfortable. Um, but I will say, like, again, shout out to that team because she was like, okay, next I'm going to be pushing towards the right. And, like, yeah. you're going to feel some pressure and, like, this part might hurt. And, like, you know, there's, like, some tissue stuck here, so I'm going to yank on that. That probably won't feel good. So they were very, like, communicative at least. Yeah, they were like, we're going to be using some forceps now because it looks like there's a little bit of tissue stuck in your cervix, which is part of why you're experiencing so much pain, like... We're going to, like, you know, get that out of the way so that's not something that you need to worry about. And the whole time she's like, I'm so sorry. Like, you're doing incredible. She also, like, very much set set us up for success as far as knowing what was going to happen next. Um, Because she was like, we have to do the pelvic exam and then um, they're going to do ultrasounds just to confirm. But, like, as I, like, you know, I'm sitting back up without my coochie in the air, she's like, with this much tissue, it probably is a miscarriage. It is possible that it's not. But more than likely that it is what it is. And we're like, okay, like, you know, thanks for being honest. Yeah. Um... Which I do appreciate. And, like, I think also, like, our, like, sweet peas have been really good about, like, mm, like, not... I feel like it's important to be honest in, like, moments of trauma. Because it's it's rough when people are, like, things happen for a reason. Or, like, you know, Fuck like, that. you know, go get them next time. And, yeah. like, while, like, that's always coming from, like, a nice place. For sure. That's not honest. And, like, what is honest is, like, that sucks. And I'm sorry. Um, and I feel like that's mostly the response that we've gotten, which is nice. Yeah, um, absolutely. but anyway, so then <laughs> I send us to get an ultrasound. And if you've never been in the hospital, you're like, it's like a legal thing. You're not allowed to walk from yeah. like point A to point B. They always have to push you in a wheelchair. Yeah. So we're like waiting for the fancy little ER wheelchair to get there, which they're always like, they are very fancy. They're like made of metal and like sturdy and they have like really nice seats. There's always a very handsome young nurse boy. Yeah. Pushing them around. So this like, you know, handsome young man comes and gets us. And like, I don't know if the first person who like transported us knew what was going on, but he was really quiet, didn't chat very much. Yeah. Appreciate it. It's the ER. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody's so, there for fun. Right. So we get to the ultrasound, like, room, which is, like, I don't know how far away it was, but, if like, maybe five minutes. If the rest of this minutes. podcast was content warning emotional, this is going to be content warning hilarious and bullshit. Yeah. I just need to, this woman, I hate this woman. I don't woman. know her name. I don't know we'll her call name. Her Kathy. Kathy. I hate you, Kathy. She, it's, and, like, we're I'm having saying, a terrible day. Before we get into bashing Kathy, I, something my therapist brought up, which is relevant. Yes. Is that maybe Kathy had also had a miscarriage herself. Right. Or this is, like, the third miscarriage, you know, couple she's seen sure. that day. It is possible that So Kathy it's possible that she's just, like, coping. Dissociating and just, like, trying to do and her And so I, I don't, uh, neither of us think she is a bad person. No. But what we are saying is she could not read the room to save her life. No. And on this day that was the worst day of our lives, I'm actually grateful to Kathy because... This is going to be a joke for the rest of our That's whole true. fucking lives. That's true. But we walk in, tear-streaked faces. We're we're going the fuck through it. And yeah. this woman looks at me, and to be fair, my hair is like a little poofier at the time, and I'm wearing my Barb from Stranger Things glasses. And so Morgan walks in first, and this woman goes, oh, and you must be mom, and says it's so chipper. And, like, the first thought that I have is that she's saying that, like, I'm the one who's going to get the ultrasound. And my first thought is, like, what a shitty thing to say mom yeah because we've just had a miscarriage so like that's not something that's happening and then the second thing i'm like i'm like is this bitch really misgendering me and my little old man loafers (laughs) and my stupid puffy hair and my gay ass vibe and so i think i said i don't even fucking know what i I don't think you said anything i think you were like uh and i was like no this is my spouse phoebe and she was like, oh, well, now that you're in the light a little more, I can totally see how young She's you like, are. She's like, oh, ha, 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 these masks, it's so hard to tell. And I'm like, oh, we're like, okay. And so, like, and we're, like, tear-streaked. Yeah. So that's strike one, Kathy. So. Oh, my God. Then, like, she is like, okay, I'm just going to pull your pants down a little bit. So I can, like, so we're going to do the, the regular ultrasound first that everyone's familiar with where they, like, squirt the stuff on your tummy and, yeah. like, you know. You've seen it on TV. You've seen it. <laughs> So, anyway, and she was like, um, is your bladder full? And I was like, oh, no. And I already knew because I've been, you know, on trying to conceive groups for years that, like, at the beginning, at least, your bladder's supposed to be really full um, for them to be able to see anything on your ultrasound. So I'm already answering, like, oh, no, like, you know, I haven't had anything to drink since we've been in the ER. Right. And as I'm, like, going to say, like, all that, she's like, oh, no, sure isn't. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Like, because she can see on the ultrasound. And she was like, so... She also, she also before even starting the ultrasound, was like, okay, 
Like we're gonna see, we're gonna see what's going on here. We're gonna see what's happening. You know, like we're just gonna take a look and see if we can see the baby. Yeah. And Morgan and I'm like, this woman's stupid because we look like shit, and she's not. She just thinks that we're like gloomy. So despite... yeah. So I'm thinking she just like thinks that we're stressed. Doesn't out, know. And that's our like because right. all I know is I haven't seen my like chart. You know. Right. So I'm like, oh, maybe the chart just says like light vaginal bleeding because that is what it was initially. And um, so Morgan. And so I'm like. No, we're we're here to con. They think it's a miscarriage. We're just here to confirm that. And this woman, and again, maybe she's just coping. But this woman like looks at both of us and is like, "Well, it could not be. You know, there's there's so many things that it could be. We're definitely gonna see. We're definitely gonna see. We're just gonna take a peek. We won't know until we look." And I hate her. Yeah. Fuck you, Kathy. Because like, we've just had a traumatic experience. Like, and she wasn't there when stuff was falling out of no, me. No, but she know, can but... see that we are not here to joke. No. Like, that's not our vibe, Kathy. That's not the vibe that we're having. So, anyway, and then she's doing the ultrasound. So, she's doing the ultrasound, and she makes some comment also about, like, you know, it's so, like, it's so hard to find, I don't know, it was something, like, it started because of my pants, but she's like, you know, because we've all gained 30 pounds since COVID. Ha, 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 ha. And we're not laughing. No. Because we're not chatting. No. Even if we were chatting, that's not an appropriate thing to say to anyone, let alone strangers who are at the ER having a miscarriage, and it's one of the worst days of their lives. So, but go off, Kathy. Yeah, so we're like, yeah, huh. Anyway, so then she's like, um, are they going to ask you, did they ask you to do a urine sample? And I was like, oh, no. Like, they took blood um, to check H- HCG. It's so hard to say fast. HCG. <laughs> um, so, like, I don't think they're worried about doing anything with my urine. Also, like, I don't have to pee because I haven't had anything to drink. And she was like, okay, well, I've got a sample cup here. Why don't you just fill her up just in case? Just in case they need it later. And, like, she doesn't know that I've been to the ER a lot in my life. And I, like, you know know that doctors ask you to pee when they want you to pee. Right. But I was like, whatever. I don't want to fight with this woman. So no. she gives me a sample cup to fill out. And so Morgan's going to the bathroom. Yeah. And this is an absurdly, ridiculously cold clinical environment in which we're having one of the worst days of our lives. Easily. Right? So Morgan's going to the bathroom and I'm like, oh, like, and I don't remember, like, I think I was sort of like, do you want me to come with you? Like, do you need a buddy essentially to like help out? Because there was, you know, it, it was, it was a graphic experience that Morgan was having. And so I wasn't sure if she needed, you know, a pal to help out. So Morgan's like, no, it's okay. I got it. And I'm like, okay, I'll be here with fucking Kathy. And so I'm sitting here. <laughs> Shout out to the Kathy who I used to work with at Starbucks. Kathy, if you hear this or see this, I love you so much. And Morgan picked this name. And anyone who's a Kathy, this isn't your fault. But I do hate this woman. And I don't think that was her name. But anyway. No, that was definitely wasn't her name. Fake name, name Kathy. It. But I hate her. So anyway, she literally is like, okay, um, I just want you to know. Um, you've probably seen it all before. But I am going to have her disrobe from the waist down. And I'm like. And we're like, yeah, we're gay. Kathy? <laughs> we're gay, Kathy. Are you, and so I'm like, ha ha, yeah, no, we're married. Like, I don't know what the fuck you want from me, Kathy. And so she's like, didn't look uncomfortable about that. And when I told this to my mom, my mom was like, oh, it's probably just because there's a lot of like shitty boyfriends who go into the ER and are like, oh, gross. I don't want to see blood coming from my woman's crotch. And I was like, okay. But I do feel like it's giving her the No, I'm sure it is something that she has to say. I'm sure, but it it didn't, it it only felt homophobic. It was the vibes. (laughs) It only felt homophobic because earlier she had said that I was Morgan's mother. That you must be which is my mother oh you must be mom unhinged an unhinged statement but moving forward this so also i'm in the bathroom and right. I, there's nothing for me to pee so right. i just bring back this like orangey colored cup right. because there's so much blood and in before that morgan gets back i'm like is there anything oh, yeah. that this could be other than a miscarriage with a significant amount of tissue that she's lost like it's a lot of clotting it's a lot of tissue and this woman basically won't tell me like no it's it's probably a miscarriage she just like dances around saying that and then says like essentially what we're looking for is to make sure that it's not ectopic or blah 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 blah, blah. and so anyway she just sort of like went on a tangent about what she was gonna do without saying no it's probably a miscarriage like I just wanted her to fucking admit that because yeah. when we first got in there she's like I guess we'll see and I'm like I hate you but go ahead anyway so and then after so after the um normal ultrasound she's like I can't see anything right because one you weren't far enough along and right. then two your bladder wasn't full so we're gonna have to do transvaginal which right. is exactly what it sounds like right. So after I pee, I come back, disrobe, um, and she's like, okay, it's going to be a little uncomfortable. And it was very uncomfortable, which, like, it's not her fault. I'm sure it always feels like that. It, it just sucks. Um, and then she's so silent. 
because there's nothing there. And we know there's nothing there. We know it's a miscarriage. But then this chipper woman is, like, saying absolutely nothing. Not a fucking word And also we can see the monitor. So we can see that there's nothing there. There's nothing. And I'm literally, like, Googling, like, what is, like, what is it supposed to look like? Yeah. see, because I can't tell really what we're looking at. No. She just sucked. So she says nothing, and then she's like, okay, so um, the doctor's going to meet you back in your room over at the ER, and they'll go over the results with you. And we were like, okay. So then they, like, wait for someone else to come transport us with the wheelchair. Um, that person is, like, a little chipper at the beginning and then clearly picked up on the vibe and said nothing else. Because it's which not hard to for pick him. up because yeah. we have tears streaming. We're not having a good day. Um, so then we wait, like, another... And I'm carrying around a little cup of pee, by the way, that this woman oh, has yeah. fucking given. She's like... And so literally we get to, like, the place where they, like, like receive the imaging from whatever and then they move you to another room. I don't fucking know. So we're sitting in these two chairs and, like, there's, you know, this uh, person who's, who's sitting at a computer, like, clearly just, like, keeping track of who they have and, like, setting people off to other places. And and I'm irritated, but not rude to this person. I don't think at least, but clearly irritated at this fucking ultrasound tech. And I'm like, hey, I just have a cup of pee here that that woman just decided to make my wife pee in a cup. This is just blood in a cup um, that she had to pee. I don't know where this is supposed to go. I don't really want to be holding it. Can you tell that woman? Like, I don't know. And the girl's like, oh, okay, let me check it. And I wasn't that rude. Like, I wasn't that You're aggressive. You're a little rude. I, I do think that the or- nurse picked up on the fact that you weren't mad at her. You were mad at the ultrasound tech. We're having a hard day, so I guess I apologize to that nurse, but regardless, she's, like, on the computer. She's like, let me see if they ordered it. And I'm like, they didn't. They did not order it. And she's like... Oh, and then, like, she did take the pee. Yeah, and she's like, like, I'm so sorry. I'll just just take it just in case they need it. And I'm like, thank you so much. And we're like, thank you. Thank you so much. The doctor didn't tell us to do it. The ultrasound tech told us to do it. But thank you. I appreciate you. It's essentially my vibe. So anyway, they're like, we're going to take you. And like, you know, neither of us work at the hospital. So maybe the ultrasound tech is normally right. Like, maybe she is, like, on top of it. And normally they do later ask for it. But I hate her. But, like, we... We just had, you know what I mean? Like, we're, I've never had that happen we're going in through all the times it. that I've gone to the hospital. And we're going through it. Like, absolutely going through it. So, anyway, so then we wait an hour in that weird room where you're with other people. Then we wait another hour in a room by ourselves. And then finally, the first doctor that we saw at the beginning um, comes back. And I was and so afraid like, it wasn't going to be the same doctor because the last time we went to the ER... It was like a random man we was, hadn't seen yeah. the whole time. And so I was like, if it's not this first doctor that we had, like, I, I literally was like, can we just go home? Like, we know what's happening, which, you know, but go ahead. Um, she came back and again was very sweet. And Lovely. was like, I'm really sorry this is happening. You know, do you guys have any questions? Um, and basically we were like, you know, did it look ectopic? Did it look like anything was, like, wrong with, like, my uterus or anything? And she said, like, no, um, you know, most of the time it's just, like, a chromosomal issue that, like, there's not anything, like, the baby couldn't grow anymore. Um, you know, there's not anything that looked wrong. She was, like, everything seems to be, like, dumping out the way it's supposed to. Um, but basically, like, talk to your OBG and they'll, like, you know, they can do more stuff. She did also say that in the future we can ask for an early ultrasound since we've had this happen. Right. So hopefully they will do that the next time that we're pregnant. Um, but she was amazing. I think we should, like, send her a little chocolate No, I really think we should, because she was incredible. She was so kind. Um, we also, like, I had, like, a lot of questions, because we're Googlers, and, like, as I was asking some, like, really specific question, um, Morgan was like, we're Googlers, and she's like, no, I can tell. I love it. Like, she was really Yeah, sweet, and I feel like, like normally really at the energy. ER, they're like, stop Googling, you're not dying. And I get where they're coming from, because right. I'm sure they get a lot of people who are convinced that they have, you know, Ebola when they have, like, a cold or whatever. For sure. But, like, I think also... I mean, I don't know, but all the nurses that I am friends with, I feel like post-pandemic, it's like, hopefully people are taking their health seriously, you know? So anyway, she was very sweet, Um, you know, and then we we left at like, we had gotten to the ER at like six, I think we left right around one. Yeah. Um, And then we came home and ordered some food and had, you know, the whole weekend off from work because Phoebe was brave and called work. Yeah. Called work. Our the, the people who we work for are great, so that was yeah. good. They that's you know it counted as like it didn't count as like an attendance thing. Yeah, it counted like as if we were pre scheduled to be on vacation, which is good. Um, yeah, they were really cool. Um, we my incredible best friend Hannah stayed with us and just like made us food and helped clean our apartment for like the whole weekend. Yeah, so that was really good. Um, we were like very much set up to have like the most like easy transition you know yeah after this event that it happened so it's definitely like it sucks um but the the more separated we are from it yeah it is like a best case scenario for a lot of reasons for sure um because like 
you know, eight weeks is better than if it was, like, two months or, like, something like that. Like, we had never, like, our, you know, embryo had a heartbeat but, like, didn't have, like, a nervous system. No. Or, like, any, like, they didn't have any, they didn't experience any pain, basically. No, no. And then also, like, you know, it, we were already um, off work on Tuesday. The, right. the day that it all started. Yeah. Um... So that was nice. And then, like, you know, for work to, like, let us take all those, take days, all those days off. And, be, like, and they haven't been, anything else. No. yeah, they haven't been, like, snotty to us since then about it or anything. They haven't been snotty about anything. No, like, yeah. Not, not. Um, also, like, because it was Christmas, we had gotten, like, money for Christmas because we were incredibly privileged yeah. as, like, gifts. And so we didn't have to worry about rent either. Right. No, we had, yeah, we had a lot and a lot of sweet peas who were super, super kind and who sent us money. So we are coming from, like, an absurd place of privilege. Yeah. And this situation fucking blew. Like, yeah. absolutely sucked. Um, And, yeah, it just, you know, wasn't a good time. I felt like it was made sort of, like, quadruple hard by the fact that we had, like, you know, just, like, been planning, and we had, like, just told my family, um, a few days before. Everybody's been really great. Nobody's been, like, stressful or, like, made us feel bad. Yeah. Um, Anyone who, like, found out on the internet was not, like, why didn't you tell me or anything like that. No, yeah, which was great. Um, and I, I think, the reason, truthfully, why we had told, why, why I had said that we should tell, um, like, the, the people who are close to us immediately when we knew that we were pregnant, um, was just, like, so that we would have that support system if something bad happened. And I was like, I don't see any, you know, cons of that. Um, And then the reason that we told the internet about the miscarriage is because it is something that's so common, right? I mean, how do you... Yeah, no, I I think it's really common. Also, like, um, I don't know if anyone, like, subscribes to Hey Mavens, who makes, like, um, really cute underwear (laughs) online. Um, But, like... The creator of that has gone through a couple of losses, um, and now she's 17 weeks, and she wrote, like, this really, like, eloquent thing today that was, like, um, like, because I've had this loss, like, I'm always going to be stressed about something going wrong, and, like, I'm never not stressed about it, but, like, also I'm trying to, like, enjoy being pregnant, and it's also something that, like, we're working on with my therapist, um, because, like, when I started therapy, I was, like, just starting to try, and then we got pregnant, and so I was like, you know, this is like always been my biggest fear, um, you know, and that's like really stressful. And she was like, no, but like you should really enjoy your pregnancy. And then we just found out after this event that my therapist has also had two miscarriages, which like it is not the therapist's job to like tell me about her life, but it is like comforting. Yeah. Um, so that's been really nice. Comforting to hear that other people have had the same really difficult experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she, like, has two kids now and is, like, you know, I mean, she's, like, grown. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's just, like, you know, really difficult. I am glad that we, like, told the internet. Also, like, we obviously didn't stream that weekend and, like, not that anybody would be pissy, but oh no, my everybody God, was, no. like, take your time. Like, no. And we've, you know, had such, like, a warm welcome coming back to those, those types of things. Yeah. You know? And I think it's because it is something that is so relatable, but so few people talk about. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's kind of, like, been incredible to, like, feel so, like, held and so supportive by this community um, who, you know, have been nothing but, like, so, like, open and, like, kind and honest with us. And then in addition to, like, our, you know, people, our, our, our in real life folks who we have. So it's been, you know, like an experience. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was also sort of wild that Morgan got pregnant the f- literally the first time we inseminated. It was, yeah. it was our first insemination cycle. And the the reason that I we had sort of, like, posted the insemination vlog when we did and, like, done other things like that is because we didn't want folks to know, like, timeline mm-hmm. around things, if that makes sense. And I think this time around we care uh, less about people knowing about the timeline of things because, um, like, you know, people on the internet are always going to ask questions, but I would hope that since we just had, like the worst thing that we could imagine happened to us very publicly, which was our worst fear, um, that they wouldn't be like, hey, <laughs> how's your two-week waiting period going? Are you pregnant again? Yeah. Because, like, that's not that's not the energy uh, anymore. <laughs> no, I also feel like as many people who follow us who subscribe to, like, different belief systems. Yeah. Like, the more people who know, like, when we're trying or, like, when we are pregnant and the more people who are, like, putting good vibes out for, like... Yeah. You know, that being yeah. that, like, it'll be 
better, if that makes sense. Yeah. Folks who have, like, said that they've, like, are lighting a candle for, like, our blueberry. It's been, like, really, really sweet. That was, like, the size um, that uh, they were when Morg had her miscarriage. So we've been calling them our blueberry for, like, a couple of days. So Morgan got a blueberry tattoo from our very dear friend. Shout out to Lemon, um, who uh, is a tattoo artist um, in Portland. Um, So kind. They're going to do one on me as well. Yeah. But, yeah. It's been the worst time yeah but it is like oh we've done it you know yeah we lived yeah we made it yeah um but yeah do you want to talk about our next insemination cycle or do you not want to talk about that uh i mean i think we'll talk about it when it happens okay um but yeah we are you know ready to try again yeah um not everyone is ready so soon. Basically, when I personally talked to my therapist, she was like, I usually tell folks to wait, like, two months. How do you feel about that? And I was like, um, here are the reasons why I don't really want to wait. Um, and it's because, like, this was already my worst fear, and it was awful. But if I have to do it, like, four more times before, you know, we have a viable pregnancy, then, like, it would be more than worth it. Um, and the whole reason that I wanted to, that both of us wanted to start trying so soon after getting married is because, like, my, you know, a lot of the women in my family have a history of miscarriage, um, and, like, loss and, like, infertility issues. And, like, none of them were for any, like, heart-shaped uterus or, like, just, like, low LH or whatever, like, reasons. Um, it's just, like, you know, they still don't know a lot of reasons behind Things like this, so um, that was why I wanted to get started early, which is still true and still, like, why I would want to continue trying as soon as possible. Yeah. Um, But that is also just us. I've also seen, like, because I'm in so many, like, trying to conceive groups, I've seen people who waited, like, a whole year. Or longer. Or longer, like, whatever you need. So, like, if you aren't trying yet after a loss, like, don't feel like you're behind. No. Um, It's just that, like, we have talked about it extensively. Yeah. And well, like, because it's Morgan's body, so it is ultimately like Morgan's decision more than anything. And else. our donor, yeah, that's is true. also like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they've been like, you know, whatever you need, in whatever, the loop, yeah, yeah. Which, which has been great. Um, but yeah, so we, you know, are excited to try again. I do think that like we'll be more honest about our like trying cycles yeah we were we were purposely misleading before and i think that now we'll either just sort of like say it or be like you know like hey um i think we'll also be really clear about like setting like boundaries in those videos so like if we're going to talk about when our next insemination cycle is it's going to be like hey setting the boundary that we need folks to not ask us like if we've tested or when we're testing um to like see if morgan is pregnant yeah um, also like we don't want even if we, if we, even if this time again we're telling people like the day we find out, we yeah. don't want them to find out on the internet. Yeah. Um, the people who are like closest to us. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, in addition to that, as a, just a boundary for like this podcast and this video, um, if you had something similar happen to you as Morgan and you were uh, like then diagnosed with like PCOS or endometriosis or something like that, please don't tell us um, because like, you're. I don't, we love you, but you're not a doctor. Right. So, and it just because like you had a similar situation doesn't mean that same thing's happening. So if like, you know, this like, uh, YouTube video is like flooded with comments of people being like, oh, I think that you have such and such, like we will take it down because <laughs> that's not good for yeah, anybody's we, mental health. We put our, a lot of our stuff on the internet for people to relate to and see yeah, themselves. Absolutely. Um, but absolutely. we, we have to protect our own mental health also. For sure. Um, for and sure. so like, you know, people, who are trying to relate to us, but are instead just kind of trauma dumping, like it does become too much. So like if we, if you post something really sad or send us like a really long message and we don't respond, it's not because we don't love you and like don't value your experience. No. It's just that like, you have to understand that sometimes we're getting hundreds of messages yeah. a day like that. And so sometimes to, it's just not like, to brag, but <laughs> Oh my God, no. But it's like, like sometimes it's, you know, like, like a like and like sending like love and good vibes to that person. But like, I don't have the emotional energy to read a yeah. hundred stories of people who had so many miscarriages before they finally had their kiddo. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like it's like, that's a lot. So nobody's in trouble. No bad, bi- bad vibes, bad vibes, bad vibes, bad vibes. Uh, we love all of you so much, but, um, yes, I think that's uh, important. Just say. Yeah. Yeah. But we're excited to try again. Um, this is very traumatic. And if, if we have to go through it again, that would suck, but we, yeah, 
you know, have a support system and we also have you guys. Yeah. Um, we also still have like all of like the videos that we had taken of uh, like the first time. And I wanted to like post those just sort of like by themselves. And then everyone told me that that's too sad. And it is. I think it is too sad. But they make me so sad. But I think that essentially probably what will happen is we'll end up posting those along with. With like the like videos of the loss. And then. Yeah. Like here's, eventually here's where we're we'll at have a viable now. pregnancy. Yeah. This is our like now like viable pregnancy like energy. This is what happened. So. Yeah. Is there anything else you need to talk about? No. I'm ready to say goodbye. <laughs> Well, thank you for hanging out, sweet peas. Thanks. If you would like to hang out with us in person, watch us on Twitch. It's like our like favorite thing. It's ever. our new favorite like social media. It's so good, <laughs> and it's because we get to like you know interact with people. Like we've gotten like a weird amount of folks following us on TikTok, essentially just because we left the creator uh, fund. Um, so if you want a place where you can like interact with us for real and actually chat with us, watch us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash couple news. Yeah, we appreciate you all, and we hope you're having a great week. Yeah, and we love you. Okay, thanks. Have a Bye. good day. Goodbye. Cute. Cute, cute.